Welcome back. What's the connection between modern shopping technology, including my Stranger Things t-shirt, Cold War spy technology, as used against the American Embassy, and this. <laughs> science fiction music. Today we're going to discuss The Thing. <laughs> Moscow, 4th of August 1945. The European chapter of World War II was over. The US and the USSR were pondering their future relationship. At the American Embassy, a group of boys from the Young Pioneer Organization of the Soviet Union made a charming gesture of friendship between the two superpowers. They presented a large hand-carved ceremonial seal of the United States to Avril Harman, the US ambassador. It was later to become simply known as The Thing. Naturally, Harmon's office checked the heavy wooden ornament for electronic bugs, but with no wires or batteries in evidence, it couldn't harm them. Or could it? Harmon gave the thing pride of place hanging on the wall of his study, but little did he know it betrayed his private conversations for the next seven years. He could not have realised that the device had been built by one of the true originals of the 20th century, Leon Theremin. Now you'll know Leon for his music in science fiction films. He built this musical instrument, which can be played without being touched. He designed it and built it in the United States. But when he returned to his home country of Russia, his wife was kidnapped and he was forced to design the thing. Eventually the mystery was solved when American radio operators stumbled upon the US ambassador's conversations being broadcast over the airways. But no bug was in evidence, and it took a while to discover the secret. The listening device inside the thing was ingeniously simple. Little more than an antenna attached to a cavity with a silver diaphragm over it serving as a microphone. There were no batteries or any other source of power. The thing didn't need them. It was activated by radio waves beamed at the US Embassy by the Soviets. It used the energy of the incoming signal to broadcast the voices back. When the Soviet radio waves were switched off, the thing was silent. Much like Theremin's unearthly musical instrument, the thing might seem just a technological curiosity, but the idea of a device that is powered by incoming radio waves and which sends back information in response is much more than a curiosity. Today, when we go shopping, we buy stuff with an RFID tag, radio frequency identification tag. Even your passport has one and your credit card enabling us all to pay for small items using an RFID reader. Library books often have RFID tags, and airlines use it to track luggage. RFID tags are powered remotely by an incoming signal. That makes them cheap and, of course, not requiring any battery. A form of RFID was used by Allied planes during World War II. Radar would illuminate the planes, and a substantial piece of kit called a transponder, which we still all use today, reacted to the radar's energy beam and sent back a signal saying, 
We're on your side, don't shoot. Some people have even implanted RFID tags inside their bodies, enabling them to unlock doors, ride the subway, or even watch YouTube. I'm obviously joking. <laughs> and we've all heard of the Internet of Things, IoT. This came about in 1999 and was named by Kevin Ashton, who worked for Procter & Gamble, because he was very excited by RFID technology in all products. He proposed that in the future we'd have RFIDs in smart watches, smart thermostats, smart speakers, and of course, smart cars. He also coined the phrase, right here, right now. Amazing. So, when you read the phrase, no batteries needed, you can thank Cold War spy technology and Mr. Leon Theremin. Thanks for watching. That was a brilliant story. Thanks to the BBC. And remember, the truth is out there. Thank <laughs> you.